Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm back. <laughs> One of my boys just sent me a uh, Instagram frequently asked questions of how to start a live video because I was having some troubles, but now I'm back. Um, back and he's better. Yes, and I found him. Okay, let's see if I can add him. Here we go. Just waiting a second. There he is. Hey, Steph. How you Steph, doing? How you doing? Doing good, man. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time uh, to have this conversation with me. Uh, I want to introduce you to all the followers and people that are watching. Um, this is Scott Kelly, um, a highly esteemed NASA astronaut. I, I want a specific title. I don't want to. Uh, I'll let you. I guess I'll let you speak on that exactly. Your your, your background, and your history, so people can can really know who you are. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, that's pretty good. I'm a retired <laughs> Navy uh, captain, astronaut, flew in space four times, twice on the space shuttle twice to the International Space Station, and recently spent uh, almost a year on board the uh, the ISS, getting home in 2016. Yeah, I'd much rather you go through that than me try to, uh, <laughs> to uh, yeah, go well, through the list. And, and I can't shoot a three-pointer to save my <laughs> life, so I think we're fair. We're that, even. Sounds, that sounds good. <laughs> but uh, just so that people understand the background, obviously, uh, there's been a a lot of uh, conversations and reaction to uh, a podcast that I was on uh, about two weeks ago um, where we were having a kind of a just impromptu conversation and it started to go down um, into some conspiracies and I made a comment about the moon landing. Um, it was one of the, a very unfortunate situation for me because it's a comment that was you know, made in jest and not to be taken seriously. Uh, but the headlines and the reaction kind of took a life of its own. And, uh, and quite honestly, you were one of the first people that reached out, um, you know, wanting to have a conversation with me in particular. And I think that uh, it, was, it was important for me to understand, you know, one, the magnitude of, you know, things that I say in my comments and how, uh, how much weight they carry, no matter if I, you know, am joking or not. Um, but to really honor that in every situation that I am. I, I put myself in and, you know, mm -hmm. for for me to reflect on the last week, uh, it's been one of those kind of situations where I had President Obama reach out. I've had uh, yourself, uh, one other astronaut um, that really wanted to educate me on how significant, you know, the, the moon landing was. Obviously, it was real. But in terms of, um, you know, the sense of national pride and how, you know, that exploration for mankind has, you know, pushed boundaries and limits on what is possible, you know, pushed our imagination for, you know, what is, you know, what we can accomplish if we put, you know, resources on mind and, and obviously guys like you who have dedicated their, their life's work to, uh, to that, uh, to that industry um, and, and pushing us forward as a, as a society and a human race. And so I do not want in any way, shape or form to demean uh, you know, the significant accomplishment that you and, and, and people that you work with on a daily basis were able to, uh, you know, to, to make you know, a reality. Um, and so for that, I, I obviously genuinely, you know, sorry for how that, that, that came across. And I uh, want to use this as an opportunity, obviously, to, to promote some positivity, some progress for us as we, mm -hmm. um, as we talk about, again, NASA's work that's ongoing today. Um, and then you reached out to me uh, and wanted to have that conversation. So I wanted to kind of put a question out to you in terms of uh, I don't have much background and in, in, in knowledge and information on exactly the, you know, the ins and outs of, of what goes on at NASA, um, kind of what your experience has been. And really just to start kind of, you know, why, why did you get into, you know, that profession and, 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 and kind of, you know, what's your experience been you know, working for NASA and being an astronaut? Yeah, you know it's interesting. I'm I'm kind of familiar a little bit with these uh, internet stories taking on the life a life of its own because I said something recently that just went absolutely insane and it's unfortunate and it's like it's really hard to walk back. Um, and the other thing is, I actually get a lot of people when I do public speaking that'll bring these things up about the moon and the 
earth being flat and it's funny. I get it. I think it's funny at times, but what happens is then it, when people believe those things, they believe the other things that are more important, like climate change, uh, not being real and vaccines and, you know, nine eleven being a, being a government conspiracy theory. So, uh, that's why I recognize, and I think this is so important to have a conversation like this because it puts our, um, you know, it highlights science, like you said, and science mm -hmm. is so, so important to our, um, you know, to our kids, to our country, to our uh, economy. So, um, you know, I got involved in this as a uh, pilot in the Navy. At first, I flew airplanes. I actually wasn't really a great student. I'm really a good example of uh, a guy that didn't really do too well in high school. Right. But found, yeah, I found some inspiration in a book and um, changed my life. And it made me think that I could do something much greater than myself. And I uh, worked really hard and I became an astronaut and I had the uh, privilege of flying in space a couple times. First time to the Hubble Space Telescope, long time ago. Um, uh, Probably, uh, you know, you were a little baby when I flew the first time, <laughs> yeah, 1999. Um, and, uh, you know, flew a second flight to build the International Space Station on the shuttle. But then, you know, had the real, the real privilege of my career was the, the time I spent for a long time in space. It was and, about uh, two years, right? Yeah, uh, I spent 520 days total and then, um, but 340 days at one time. That's why. And uh, yeah, what we've been able to accomplish in space is just incredible. We have incredible, incredible potential and a, a group of people, like you said, that just dedicate their lives to this uh, program that they believe so much in. I think one of the good things that came out for me is I get to educate myself now, obviously having a conversation with you, um, hopefully in the next couple of months, be able to go uh, to the moon lab, um, mm. uh, the lunar lab, I should say, and, or, you know, at NASA and see up close and personal, um, you know, everything that was accomplished, you know, over 50 years ago, um, understand how I myself can articulate, um, you know, the findings and the experience that, uh, um, that, you know, again, that was accomplished there and, and be able to explain to people that ask me, uh, you know, kind of what I believe in. So, uh, what should I expect when I go in terms of uh, you know, the experience, the people that are there, the people that work there, yeah. um, and kind of, yeah, getting immersed into the, the true history of our country? Well, are you going to go before or after you play the Rockets? I think that's important. I think it's better that you go before the game than after. I think if you go after, you might not get as good of a reception. Right. All the Rocket fans down there. <laughs> But uh, and they're my team, by the way. So go Rockets. I'm from Houston. But uh, a uh, you know what you can expect. Uh, I think you'll expect a great reception. The people there are wonderful. Texans are wonderful in general. Um, the Lunar Lab is very interesting. You'll have to put on a uh, what's called a bunny suit, so you cover yourself up completely because the rocks uh, they don't want to even today. Uh, you know, 50 years later, they don't want to contaminate these rocks. Uh -huh. They're still doing science with them and it's interesting we got 800 pounds of those rocks from the moon spread them out through universities all over the world and um, they're 200 years older than any rock most of them are 200 years older than any rock on earth so uh you know clearly they didn't come from earth then right. they, they came from the moon on the apollo space uh, space program so you know you'll get to see all the the stuff in the lunar lab but then i'm sure they're going to show you other things that nasa is doing right now uh, we are gearing up to uh, next year, maybe early the year after, launch two different types of spacecraft, the SpaceX vehicle, to launch crew members into space to the International Space Station. This is the first time we'll be doing that on SpaceX. Uh, Boeing's building a uh, similar vehicle to do the same thing. Um, and that'll be the first time that we're launching people from uh, the U.S. soil into orbit. We had right. space, uh, um, Virgin Galactic actually launched a guy, two guys into space uh, in a, a suborbital flight here uh, a few days ago, but hopefully we'll be launching into orbit again. Uh, we're building a rocket for uh, deep space exploration to go back to the moon. 
uh, someday, and you'll get to hear about that. You'll get to see the, the simulators we use for the space station. So I think it'll mission control, which is very interesting, including the Apollo mission control. I, I think they'll want, you to, want to show you that. So, you know, I think all this stuff will be a really good informative uh, visit for you. And hopefully, you know, if I'm in town, whenever it is, I can stop by and uh, join definitely. some of this video. We definitely love you to obviously meet you in person and kind of uh, have you walk us through along with all the other uh, uh, experienced people uh, on, on at NASA. But in terms of like the one other call out <clears throat> and how the reaction has, has kind of come from the, these these headlines, as you call them, um, in terms of like for our next generation, um, the, the, the power of science, the belief in science, the uh, I know a lot of schools and kind of our generation in terms, in terms of STEM learning, um, and things that really can propel our society forward with uh, the next generation really, you know, investing in themselves in these areas. Uh, I know that's important. I never want my comments to put that in question in terms of, you know, people doubting, um, doubting science even and just, you know, how important that is for us to, uh, to keep, you know, moving our society forward. I guess in terms of you, what kind of work have you seen um, and, and progress have you seen in that in that area and, and how kids are uh, these days are really you know, opening up their minds and their imagination to what's possible uh, for their future? You know, I, I, I think there are certain areas, uh, certain schools, certain areas of the country that have good STEM education programs. Um, uh, and then other places that, uh, you know, are falling behind. Um, and the danger and the risk is that STEM education uh, science, engineering, math, people that, um, you know, study things, build things, these things, these technologies contribute to our economy is so, so very important to our country. And it's really what, what has made our country what it is. It's one of the, the most important aspects that, that has made America uh, such a, 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 an accomplished uh, country because those are the people, the STEM people, um, and, and sometimes people add art in there because of, you know, art allows you to imagine things mm -hmm. and uh, you want to imagine the things that you're going to then later build. But these are the people that build things, uh, build technologies that are so critical to our national security, our national defense, our, uh, and also our economy. So it is incredibly important. And I also travel around the world and I see uh, how a lot of other countries that want to kind of catch up to where we are, they do that via a very, very strong STEM education program. So this is something that we, I think, um, you know, regardless of where we are, always, yeah. always need to be pushing ahead because other people uh, are trying to catch up. And even a lot of countries have well passed us in this area. I hear you. And that's important, obviously, in terms of the magnitude of my, my words and kind of how that can move the needle for you know, kids that look up to me on the court, off the court. Um, mm -hmm. That's important for people to realize and, and the opportunities from, you know, from career standpoints and things that they can you know, really impact, you know, mm -hmm. their communities at, you know, at, at a small scale and at an extremely large scale um, as they go forward. Not everybody's going to, you know, be in space for two years yeah. and everybody's going to be able to you know, be professional athletes, whatever the case is, but this amount of opportunity right now and things that can be extremely impactful um, mm -hmm. that they should be able to, you know, aspire to be for sure. You know what I, I try to use and one thing I try to encourage kids uh, with, uh, especially using the space program as an example is, you know, our country has this incredible capacity to do really amazing technical things. We went to the moon in the 1960s. We built this International Space Station that we've been operating for 20 years, and I think that's the hardest thing we've ever done. I think it's harder than going to the moon. We've done this safely, right. successfully. A million-pound space station built by an interna international partnership of 15 countries. We built this in space in a vacuum and extremes of temperatures and pressures, connecting modules together, some of which had never touched each other before on Earth, that this is the hardest thing we've ever done. And if we can do this, and if we believe we can do this, we should be, believe we can do other things. We can solve the other problems we have in, in, in our country, whether it's problems with climate change, whether it's problems with our, uh, um, you know, our, uh, you know, uh, financial issues we may have, you know, any technical problems or even things that are not technical. When we 
can prove that we can do the hardest things, well, we can then do the other things. So I use, you know, the space program as an absolute inspiration to inspire. Basically, what I say is if we can dream it, we can do it. We've proven that. 100%. Well, I know I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to going to Houston and seeing, uh, seeing things up close and personal, obviously educating myself. I uh, hope that you are able to be there. Uh, hopefully the schedule the line and some more good will come out of this um, and more awareness exactly of all the great work that's going on inside uh, of NASA. But um, again, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, I know it's been a, a wild week and uh, hopefully <laughs> – People understand exactly um, the the true you know belief in our country and what we've been able to accomplish should never be put into question. And um, you know we're definitely going to make some good out of this. So thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, I know you're you're a busy man, uh, pulling in a lot of different directions. So yeah. uh, again, appreciate that, and hopefully I'll see you down in Texas. Yeah. My pleasure, Steph. Great talking to you, and yes, uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very thank much, you. Scott. Appreciate it. All right. Take it easy.